I'm Zeeshan Shah and welcome to Z Interactive YouTube channel, your own training institute. So today we will start with the vector map, which is the vector node or vector warp node. And we'll see how this works. Basically, this node is also just like flood fill node, kind of for variation and for the different kind of randomness. But this is more based on color. And with that, we get it. Uh, it is like more kind of a colored based warp ma uh, ma maps can be used here uh, and that can be utilized many parameters uh, at the same time usually for uh, distortion and randomness variations and those kind of things so first what we will do is that we'll add here a tile generator And I got the tile generator here and amount I will try to reduce this uh, to something around four this I will keep it 10 so that it will look, look more like a or uh, like bricks okay and then after that what I will do here is that I will ch uh, keep this uh, instead of brick let's keep it square okay and then We'll go down here in the scale. We will reduce the size to 0 0.9 to something. So we can get something like that. Okay. And after this, I will go to the position and I will use offset around one or maybe something like this, maybe 0.5 one will give me one will come back to its own position so 0.5 is the one that i will use it here or let's do one thing let's keep it uh zero and offset randomness i can keep it one that is much more better than just changing the offset here change offset random to one now this will uh generate the bricks where we have the uh, bricks now now we need to uh, break this uh, these bricks with some sort of cracks to it okay so let's apply some crack but before doing that let's take this put it here so we can see how we are getting the bricks here so we have these bricks normal bricks but we need to put some cracks here so what I will do here is that I will add cell Let's put the cell here and inside the cell, let's change some of the settings here. Uh, let's keep it five, the size of it. Okay. And this is what I will get it here. Now, one thing, as I told you before, uh, these nodes fill uh, like flood fill and uh, uh, vector warp node, they all work with 100% black, 100% white, like black and white, which is 100% without any sort of these uh, the gray shades. So I will just go here and use edge detect here so I can have some edges. Now inside the edge here, uh, I will keep it as it is. Um, I'll not cho uh, change anything here. I want to add some blending here. So I will go to the blend. Okay, after adding the blend, I will take the edge detect and put it in the foreground. And I will take this one, put it here. Okay, and I will take the holes of these with shift key and put it here. Okay, so I will have something like this, but I have to use a different blending mode here and as I told you before we will have a completely uh, new, uh, different chapter uh, for only these blending modes so here I will use multiply so they both will multiply here so it will something like look, to, uh, look like this now good we got some cracks on our uh, bricks but kind of it looks fake it's like it doesn't look like something natural because naturally you don't have uh the crack uh, cracks like this all over the place just like like it's stamped over there it looks like a stamped uh cracks so to avoid this we will use 
the vector warp node. Now, as you know, in reality, the cracks doesn't work this way. It's way more unrealistic. So the cracks should be more uh, like random, vari uh, like uh, with variations. Um, and so that's how we will use here the vector warp. Now, what I will do here, I will put, uh, I'll press spacebar, vector warp node here. Okay. So I have here a vector warp grayscale. But the one that I want to use is the vector warp, uh, a vector morph uh, grayscale. Okay. So I will take the vector morph grayscale here and I will take my edge detect from here and I will put this inside my vector, uh, vector warp. And here I got it. But actually we need uh, a color tiles map. So we will add a flood fill just like uh, we have been using flood fill uh, in our last lesson. So to continue, we need a color tiles map. So we will add flood fill. If you remember the flood fill that we used in our last lesson. So we will bring the flood fill and plug in the output of the tile generator to the input of flood fill. So spacebar, flood fill. We got the flood fill here. Okay. And let's put this blend somewhere here. And put this here. Take this one it here and let's remove this node because it's just going here I don't want that so I will delete this one for now okay so now I have this one so let's see what we can do next now once we have this as you know flood fill is used for variation and uh, like for randomness so we will use the flood fill here for the same purpose so I will take this uh, output fr uh, from the flood fill and put this in the vector field of the vector morph grayscale. Now it's there. So if I will double click it here, you can see that what it is doing at this stage right now. But this is not actually what we want right now. So we cannot directly plug this in. So in the last lesson, as I told you before, that flood fill needs another flood fill node to work with. So let's remove this from here. I'll press space bar, flood fill to random color. I will choose that. Here I have the flood fill to random color. So I will choose this one. And from here, I will put it inside. And you can see now they are basically colorized, all of them. But every one of them have a different color. So this means that when it will be uh, added here in the vector morph, so this node, these random colors will randomly move these cracks. So just like uh, this, let's see, I will take this, put it inside here. And when I will go here inside, so you can see how they are uh, being changed, uh, like changing. But the amount uh, right now is too high. So what I will do is that I will start reducing the amount here until I get the result I'm looking for. So you can see if, I'm if I will reduce it to zero, it will go back to its normal uh, shape like this is. So if I start increasing, you can see it is starting, start, it have started to move. So just the way you want it. Don't move it a lot, a little bit, just like this. Okay. So that it just uh, becomes random. That's all what we want here something like this now here what i will do is that let's let's move this one here and put the blend there now this blend i know uh, i don't need this anymore i will delete this part because we are now working with this vector morph grayscale so i will take this output put it inside the foreground here so i will have this here because like there is uh let's make this copy right now And then I will take my regular uh, normal tile 
and plug it here inside this. Once I'm done, I will go back here and change this to multiply. And now you can see it looks much more realistic than before. Now the, the, these dials are basically uh, randomly, uh, you can say, uh, generated on my map, uh, like on my screen, on my object here. So if you will go here and now you can clearly see what's going on. So this is how you can get the actual result. So if I will go back here in my vector morph, if I start increasing this, you, you will start getting more random result. But you have to be careful with these uh, stuff here because this will, uh, some it will create some wonky uh, artifacts here. So you have to avoid that. Something like that. Okay, another way we can do is that we can also bring now a uh, a different sort of a uh, like a map here, like a grunge map, and we can add the grunge map over here as well. So let's bring the grunge map here. Okay, so let's see which grunge map we can bring. Let's bring the grunge map 007 here. I will. Now add one more blend here. So I'll take all these with the shift key, put it here. And after that, what I will do here is that I will take my, uh, this old blend and I will uh, plug it in to the, uh, this, uh, sorry, the background. And this one, I will plug it into the foreground, the grunge map. Okay. So right now I'm getting this sort of a result because I don't have any any sort of chain, uh, like blending mode here. So here what I will do is that I will start reducing the opacity uh, here. Maybe to something like 0.14. Enter. And you can see that it's creating this sort of a uh, result here and giving some grunginess here as well but just like before this uh, gr uh, grunge map if you can see here it's not uh, randomly appearing on my bricks so i will do the same thing here so let's remove this for now so what i will do uh, to give it the same effect uh first of all uh like after removing this one here, I will take my vector morph grayscale. Okay. And I will copy this one, control C, control V, and I will put it here. And vector field, I will keep it the same one, which is coming from here. But the input, I will delete and I will use this input here. And you can see that how this is generating randomly. Okay, before it wasn't doing that. So now you can see you have this result. And if you want to play with the settings, you can do the little bit change of the settings here. And plug this one inside the uh, foreground again. Everything is set up. But now you have these grunge also appearing randomly on the bricks. So if I will go here, I can increase the amount of this to make it more uh, random, but don't increase a lot, otherwise you will have these sort of artifacts here. So a bit just like that, and you will have something, this sort of an effect here. So that's pretty much it. I hope you have understood the, the concept of the vector morph uh, node over here. It's basically used for different sort of like uh, randomness as, as well here, just like what we have used before. So, and plus we are using the same one instead of creating a new one. So try uh, try your best to use the, exec uh, the existing uh, nodes, just like what I used here, because I didn't made a new, uh, uh, like a vector morph uh, grayscale, what I did, I just copied this one and pasted it here. So when you copy something, it copies its connected nodes too. So only thing with that I deleted was the input because I want this grunge to be inputted there, not 
the cell or anything else so i removed that and i plugged it but the vector field i'm still using this one so i will keep this vector i, I kept this vector field so i didn't remove that and in the end i got this result here so completely random a more much more better than what it was before so i hope you have liked this lesson and i'm sure you will be waiting for the next lesson so i would like to thank you all for all your support and i hope you will continue to support me so please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to it yet and i will be posting a lot of new content so don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can receive the notifications about them if you have liked my video so please hit the like button and leave your questions in the comment section below and i will surely answer them in the end i would like to mention that please watch all my videos online instead of downloading them because uh all my hard work won't pay off like this so please to support me always watch my videos online so thanks once again everyone and soon we will make uh, meet in the next lesson take care of yourself stay healthy and keep learning there is one important announcement i would like to make i have started three great membership plans on my channel i have introduced zdi friends membership plan which will give you exciting perks like loyalty badges and priority on comments i have also introduced zdi early bird plan which will give access to z interactive tutorials very early before they become public so you will get all these lessons at once and you can binge watch last but not the least i have introduced that i premium plan which will give access to advanced professional tutorials which you will find it very very expensive outside and i will be giving this at a very low amount of price so visit my channel now and click on the join membership to get more information i hope you become one of my members if you want to learn how to create a highly detailed prop procedurally using Substance Designer, so this premium tutorial series is for you. Join my premium membership plan on YouTube and get access to all premium tutorials. In this tutorial series, I will demonstrate how to use Substance Designer along with simple geometry to create a realistic smashed up retro television.